Is there a more overlooked truck in America than the Nissan Titan? The Titan debuted in the 2004 model year, and really quickly it became sort of an interesting alternative to the big three, who were not exactly making their most compelling versions of their top sellers at the time. My brother-in-law actually had one, and I thought it was quite good. It had solid V8 power and a sort of functional and high-quality interior that was better than the interiors that you found in Ford, Chevy, and Ram. Back then, I think Ram was still Dodge Ram. Then they became Ram, because apparently that's cooler. Now it's 2021, and we're still only on the second generation of the Nissan Titan, which started in 2016. So what exactly happened? And does the Nissan Titan make sense now in 2021? <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Jax here, and today I have a rather surprising review over the 2021 Nissan Titan. <laughs> Before we get into the features, the specs, and the price, let's talk about styling really quickly, because I imagine that's gonna be a sticking point for some people. Yes, in this Pro 4X trim with its giant bed bar. In bar form? The Titan does look sort of almost truckishly cartoonish, but if I'm being honest, there's something about that that I kinda like. What? L let me explain. I don't think the Titan is as traditionally handsome as something like the Toyota Tundra or the Ford F-150. It's definitely not playing it safe like the Ram, and it's certainly not as controversially styled as the Chevy Silverado, which is pretty much what a truck designed by an eight-year-old who was just for some reason exposed to the Terminator might look like. I'll be back. It's taking some chances, kind of like the GMC Sierra, but for what it's worth, I, I think the Sierra pulls it off a little bit better. It's still one of my favorite trucks in terms of looks. I also like that Nissan has sort of committed to the Titan branding. It's everywhere. Even the taillights kind of look like the Titan sort of T logo, but sort of split in half. That's really cool, and honestly, I appreciate details like that. Look. I think the bed bar you keep using the horn. is absurd. But Nissan went all in on the Pro 4X, and it's the best looking version of the Titan, and I can appreciate that. I mean, in standard trim, it looks a bit too much like an F-150 that was sort of left out in the sun too long and sort of like melted or something. <laughs> But enough about all that look stuff. Let's talk about the engine. Under the hood, the Titan is sporting a 5.6 liter V8, making 400 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque, all running through a Jatco nine-speed automatic transmission. Also available is absolutely nothing. If you want a Titan, this is the powertrain that you're getting. It's good for zero to 60 in about 7.7 .7 seconds. Not great, not terrible. And it can tow up to 9,200-ish pounds, which is 
fine. We're fine, we're all fine here. But kind of like the Toyota Tundra, the limited powertrain options shouldn't deter most buyers. For your average pickup truck buyer, yes, Todd, you're just the average pickup truck buyer. You're not special because you're buying a truck. This powertrain is more than adequate. In fact, as you'll see later in the driving portion, it's quite good. In the back, you have a smallish bed that's capable of carrying about 1,700 pounds. The tailgate goes up and, uh, and down, and there are many places to tie many things in place. Oh, and there's also a, uh, a bed liner that has some, some shapes molded into it in case you have things that are those shapes, like a cup of water or a, um, like a, a baseball or something. Look, okay, it's not the Sierra, it's not the F-150, it's not the Ram with its multi-purpose tailgate. It's a truck with a bed because you know that that's all you need. You can't even nail a picture straight, okay? Your truck doesn't need a tailgate that opens 17 different ways. And if you can't climb into the back of your truck, you have bigger problems than your need for a pickup truck. Inside, it's a bit different. Unlike the Tundra, which gives you seats and um, vents and a, and a steering wheel, along with the feeling that you've somehow stepped back in time, yep, yep, yep. the Titan gives you Nissan Super Herb zero gravity seats, which absolutely belong in a full-size pickup truck or SUV, along with a panoramic sunroof and Nissan's very solid infotainment system running through a nine-inch center screen. That has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, don't worry. Like, do we even have to ask about that anymore? You can enjoy your favorite podcasts through the optional 485-watt Fender audio system that has 12 speakers, a separate subwoofer, and Panasonic's motion control, whatever that is. All kidding aside, the Fender audio system sounds phenomenal in a full-size pickup truck, and it's definitely a cut above something that you would expect to find in such a utilitarian vehicle. Oh, and you also get Nissan's excellent Safety Shield 360, which covers like all the safety systems with like blind spot monitoring and cross-traffic alert, and a rear view camera and 360 degree camera. Unfortunately, the resolution is horrific, and it looks like someone taped 2005 Nokia flip phones to each side of the pickup truck. It's not exactly the Sierra's uh, multi-view, high-def screens, or the F-150 also has a similar system. I imagine the Ram does as well. This is definitely better than nothing, and it does give you a panoramic view, but the resolution isn't Great. Now, since this is a Pro 4X model, it sort of looks like something out of Mad Max. What a lovely day! So let's talk about the off-road chops for a second, because I can assure you that this Titan is not playing dress up. The Titan has a fully boxed frame, and this particular model comes with Bilstein monotube shocks. It has 18-inch wheels wrapped in general grabber rubber, and it has 9.8 inches of ground clearance. The seven inch information display between the analog gauges in front of the driver can show you tire angle, pitch, and roll. And in its most hardcore off-road modes, you have access to hill descent control, hill start assist, a brake actuated limited slip differential, and a locking rear diff. Of course, it has the requisite tow hooks, painted orangey red, because of course they are, and underbody skid plates to protect the sensitive bits, along with the sort of front bashy plate so you can bash into things when you're off-roading. It seems kind of counterintuitive, but I don't off-road much. And I know that most hardcore off-roaders don't spec sidesteps of any kind, but in Motor Trend's off-road testing of this truck, the beefy metal bars did protect the truck's side skirts through some pretty extreme terrain. So there's that. At the expense of ground clearance, you get a little bit more protection for the actual side skirts of the truck. So 
I don't know. You make the choice. So here we are behind the wheel of the 2021 Nissan Titan. And it is surprisingly good. I'll be honest with you, the only thing I knew about the Titan going into this review was that it was sort of the not so good looking full-size truck option. And that, as I said before, my brother-in-law had one of the first gen and it was quite good actually. And you guys know that I like being pleasantly surprised. I am more than happy to be dead wrong about a car. And while this is still not the most handsome full-size truck, behind the wheel, it's really good. It might only have one engine option, but that engine is plenty powerful and plenty torquey. You don't really need other engine options if you are a casual truck driver. And I'm speaking to the lot of you. Most of you guys drive a truck because you want to drive a truck, not because you need to drive a truck. And the 400 horsepower V8 in this is perfectly up to the task of motivating this giant thing. Another high point is the transmission. The nine speed automatic transmission is impressively smooth, almost completely invisible in its operation, and actually really intelligent in the way it goes about shifting gears. I don't ever feel like it's kind of caught out of sorts, like it's not sure what gear to be in. It almost always feels like it knows where to be and what I'm asking of it. And that's fantastic. It really makes the most out of this power plant. The ride is well controlled. In fact, it's really well controlled. It's a little on the brittle side over rough pavement. I have some roads by me that I've complained about in the sort of outtakes that have not been paved for whatever reason and it is a little brittle, sort of like the Ford F-150 kind of loses its composure in the back end. Neither the Titan nor the F-150 is as composed over that type of pavement as the uh, GMC Sierra AT4 was. I would say the Toyota Tundra is sort of like in the middle, it's pretty good, but the AT4 to me is still the ride and handling champion, but the Titan is I would have to say better than the F-150 that I had, the Power Boost Hybrid. Like the handling, the steering at normal speeds is good, but at lower speeds like this, I'm turning onto the handling road right now, it's like weirdly heavy. Um, I don't mind because I'm super buff. I'm kidding, I'm reasonably in shape. But it is sort of absurdly heavy, like it's obnoxiously heavy. There's no reason for the steering to be that heavy at low speeds at normal speeds and highway speeds, it's perfectly fine. Now we're over kind of the rough part of the handling road. And like the F-150, it's getting a little brittle. It's comfortable and compliant, um, but now it's kind of sorted itself out. Going around the first turn, there's an acceptable amount of roll. This is a full size pickup. And now over the sort of larger kind of wallowy humps and bumps on this road, the Titan feels really good. It's very comfortable. It's helped by the fact that these zero gravity seats are amazing. Like these are the exact type of seats that you would want in a full size pickup or SUV. They're fantastic. High five Nissan. I love them. Now we're coming up to the big bump here and let's see how the Titan does over the big bump. Wow, really well controlled, really well controlled over the big bump. The Bilstein monotube shocks definitely keep the body kind of composed over some of these larger undulations. Now, while we're on the subject of steering and we're at a stop here, hey, how about that old steering column mounted gear shift lever? I know some of you guys like it. I personally don't care. I have one in my Suburban or Mrs. Jax's Suburban as she would no doubt uh, correct me. I know some people prefer it. It does free up console space. I like it fine, it is what it is, but the Titan does have one. So for what it's worth, you shift gears with the steering column lever. The gas pedal and brake calibration are spot on. The gas pedal especially gives you the precise amount of power that you want. The brake pedal has good uh, bite. It, it definitely slows the truck. The feel is a little mushy, but the power of the brakes is unquestionable. So there's nothing to be concerned about there. It's just not the greatest feeling pedal in the world. And as you can see, this cabin is immensely spacious. 
I am six foot six, and the seat is raised up really high. Why? Uh, because it is. Uh, the person who dropped it off obviously was a shorter person, had the seat raised up high. I got in, still had tons of headroom, even with the giant panoramic glass roof, and I was like, why not? I'm just the ultimate king of the world, an insanely tall person with the seat up high and a full-size off-road bias pickup truck. You do feel like the king of the road. The only thing higher than this truck are like the HD dually gigantic 25 3500 series trucks. I love all the controls. They're big, they're chunky, they're well placed, you know, for working kind of uh, construction folks that wear gloves and things like that. You can grab and manipulate everything easily. All the buttons are large, everything is clearly labeled. It is not at all like the GM Twins interiors, which is like a load of plasticky crap, to be honest with you. And I love GM. If you're new here, I love GM. I'm a GM fanboy growing up. But to be honest with you, the interiors of the Sierra and the Silverado are very disappointing. The interior of the Tundra is an absolute joke compared to this truck. In fact, I would say, having not driven the Ram, that this has the nicest interior. I've, it's like tied with the F-150 in terms of like materials and quality. Now the F-150's interior had a bigger screen and digital gauges and stuff like that. The Titan has analog gauges with a very large digital center screen. But having not driven the Ram, I would say this is one of the nicest interiors that you can get. I know that the Ram is supposed to have an even nicer interior, but until I drive it, hey, Ram, come on. The only one I haven't driven yet. Let's go. Now, if I have a few minor complaints, it's that just some of the controls are a little far away when you're a taller person because the seat has great adjustability. I have plenty of space. The steering wheel comes out really far, which is awesome for tall people. If you're a tall person looking for a full-size truck, this one is an excellent, it fits excellent for tall people. But it makes some of the controls, even for my long arms, a little far away. Like the seat heat and uh, cooling ventilated uh, seats is like, too far away for me to reach. I have to like lean all the way forward because it's down there on the console. Some of the buttons over here are a little bit far away, but you know, that's a minor complaint from a freakishly tall person. So take it with a grain of salt. I think Nissan's infotainment system in this is a little bit busy, just the sort of layout on the screen, but it responds reasonably quickly. It's not super laggy like some of them. It's also fully featured, as I mentioned, in the interior portion. So I've got no complaints about it, except that uh, a lot of these trucks, cars, test vehicles are delivered with Sirius XM radio turned on, and I have it set to the Lithium 90 station, which is one of my favorite. And I've noticed, normally I connect Apple CarPlay, but I just haven't yet. And I noticed that the Sirius XM reception on this thing sucks. Like, I live in the suburbs of Atlanta. Like, it's a major city, and I don't live like way out in the suburbs. I live in like normal Atlanta suburbs and it's constantly going out around my house. Now, I'm in a little bit of a dead zone for like cell service and stuff, but like, come on. I mean, this is the, this is the only car I've ever had or truck that I noticed that being a problem. So if you're like a diehard Sirius XM person, I don't know, maybe you care. I certainly don't. But there is a lot to like about the Titan. This is, one of the most kind of surprisingly impressive vehicles that I've tested in the past couple of months. I went into this sort of expecting like nothing, really. I was like, eh, the Titan's not a super good looking truck. It probably drives in a super average way. But to be honest with you, this is like exactly what I would want out of a truck if I were to get one. Not to mention, as I will be saying in a second, the price discrepancy between this and similarly optioned trucks from the big three. Like, this is pretty awesome. The Titan drives phenomenally well. The powertrain is strong, smooth, responsive. It steers and handles well enough for a full-size truck. I think a lot of you, if you are not put off by the Titan's looks, or you could live with them, we'll say that, I think a lot of you would do well to take one of these for a test drive. I think you'd be very surprised, especially if you don't need a specific powertrain. Like, I praise the Duramax diesel in the AT4 because it's a pretty innovative powertrain. It's got a lot of torque, it's got good fuel economy. If you need that powertrain because you're gonna be towing things, 
and you want decent fuel economy, then it makes sense. But if you just want a big V8 in a truck, this is all you could want and more. Now I'll show you guys real quick. It's not quite as characterful as the V8 in the Toyota Tundra. Um, the 6.2 liter V8 in the GMC Denali is kind of like the big daddy V8, you know. Ford has a big one, Toyota has their 5.7, like, and the Toyota one's kind of, kind of fun. Like it has that wind up kind of rip that you get out of some of the Lexus V8s. It's, it's a lot of fun, but this one is 5.6 liters, 400 horsepower. Doesn't quite have the same gusto. So I'm sure you could fix that with like, you know, some pipes and a muffler. I don't really know what the aftermarket is like for the Titan. Maybe it's super strong and I'm unaware, but here, I'll show you. Gratuitous engine noises. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have the shove, the sort of wallop of that Toyota V8. The Toyota Tundra's V8 is surprisingly effective. This one just doesn't have that kind of character to it. That's fine, that's totally fine. Tell you what, I like this truck a lot, a lot more than I thought I would. I'm not saying it's the best full-size truck you can get right now, but golly, I might give you the most reasons for buying it. <laughs> So should you buy a Nissan Titan Pro 4X? Well, if you don't mind the styling, or maybe you even like the styling in a sort of over the top kind of way, I think you'll find a lot to like here and a lot of value. The powertrain is excellent and it drives as well as pretty much any of its rivals. And it has all of the off-road capability and chops that, let's be honest, nearly everyone who would buy a full-size truck would ever need. Stop kidding yourself. You're not that adventurous and your wife definitely doesn't think so. On top of all that, it's loaded with desirable features and options. Well, we haven't really talked about price in detail, so let me just sort of lay it out for you guys right here. The Titan Pro 4X trim starts at over 50 grand. And as you see it here behind me, pretty much loaded to the gills with every available option, it's right at 60 grand. That's really not bad considering the Tundra TRD Pro I had a couple months back was almost $56,000 and it wasn't nearly as loaded with options or hardly as nice inside as this Titan is. The GMC Sierra AT4 with the Duramax diesel that I tested last year costs just over $64,000. And the upcoming Ford F-150 Tremor, which is sort of their hardcore off-road model, will ring in at about the same. The Ram Rebel, you guessed it, about the mid 60s. I actually think that puts the Nissan Titan, especially this Pro 4X model, in a really sweet spot in the marketplace. It comes with nearly everything anyone could ever want in a full-size pickup truck, loaded to the gills, and undercuts the big three by thousands of dollars. Is it the best full-size truck on the market? No, probably not. Is it the most innovative full-size truck? Definitely not. But the magic of the Titan is that it gives most truck buyers, myself included, an admitted truck poser, everything they could need in a truck while still kind of commanding a price that actual people can afford. I don't know if you've noticed recently, but full-size trucks and SUVs are selling at insane prices right now. Let me put it this way. It's not my favorite truck that I've tested. I really like the Sierra AT4, and I also really, really like the Ford PowerBoost Hybrid. But the Titan might be the one that I have the most respect for. And you know why? Because all it wants at the end of the day is your consideration. Give it a chance, and like me, you might come away pretty surprised with a newfound respect 
for Nissan's full-size pickup truck. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and interesting. And if you can lay your biases aside for a second, I would urge you, if you're in the market for a full-size pickup truck, to go test drive the Nissan Titan just to satisfy your curiosity or just because I urged you to with this overly long YouTube review. I think you might find that it checks a lot of boxes and that you won't be missing the things that it doesn't have. And you definitely might not be using those things if you're honest with yourself. So go give the Titan a look. I hope you found this video useful. Please consider liking the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. And comment down below if you would seriously consider a Nissan Titan. Why or why not? And also, one thing that I'm curious about that a couple people have messaged me on Instagram and social media is, where is the Titan sort of marketing and fanfare? It feels like it's just sort of left high and dry. Come on, Nissan. This is a good truck. Give it the respect it deserves. I'm asking you to, and shoot, Nissan, you give it the respect it deserves as well, because this truck deserves more than it gets. I'll tell you that much. I hope you liked the video. I will catch you in the next one. Until then, ride safe and drive safe. I'll see you soon. Peace. There are literally a million bugs out here right now. And let's not start the talking part until we're over the terrible pavement that has been this way for, you know, a year. <laughs> Just past a police officer who had pulled over a, <gasps> it was a Dodge Charger. Oh, shocking, shocking. A fool driving a Dodge Charger? No, please. <laughs>